I want to speak on something that I don't think too many people are paying much attention to. There's so much that's going on in this world and in this country, so much that's going on around us and in our personal lives that we really don't take time out to stop and look around. There's things that's happening that's fastly creeping up on you that you're not really paying attention to. I want to show you something that I've been watching for a while. Ever since they started talking about women's rights. Ever since they started talking about the Me Too movement and feminism. We are heading toward and fastly approaching towards a matriarchy society. Now, in case some of you don't know what a matriarchy society is, matriarchy is a social system in which women hold the primary power positions in roles of political leadership, moral authority, social privileges, and control of property. While those definitions apply in general English, Definition specific to the description of anthropology and feminism differ in some respects. A matriarchy society is a system that's controlled by women. I don't know if you've been paying much attention, but the Democrats are preparing Michelle Obama and Kamala Harris for the 2024 election. According to some articles that I read, I'm not sure if that's how it's going to go. Michelle Obama might say that she's not interested. Kamala Harris, she's power hungry. So I think this is something that she herself might go for because being vice president, although she's doing nothing, she's got a taste of that type of power. But Michelle Obama and Kamala Harris is being prepared for 2024. They're going to use racism, white supremacy, and black people to do it. If black people and white Democrats Vote another Democratic president. Like I mentioned in a prior video, black people can kiss their future goodbye. You've just destroyed the future of your children. I repeat that you have just destroyed the future of your children. But I think so many people are programmed and conditioned to the point where they really have no idea what they're doing. In their mind, they're thinking that they're doing the right thing. When in reality, they're destroying themselves. So if you look at those that's in position now, Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, you have women, primarily black women, and I give very I give props to black women that have come up. But many of those black women are out for revenge. Black men need to stand up. You need to go to school. You need to you need to take your rightful position in this world. Because black women have dashed out in front of you. And now when you commit a crime, you now have to stand before an angry black woman, someone that's got some revenge that she want to place upon you. Because a black man left her as a single parent mom. 
A black man destroyed her life. So now this is the opportunity for her to get revenge on you. So now you have to stand before that same black woman that you call out of her name, that you abused, that you announced that you hated so much. And the black woman that's in position of authority is going to be worse than your slave masters. Black women will be worse than white men towards black men. Because now you have to stand before that judge. If you hire a black attorney, she may work against you. And being that you don't know the law, you have no idea that she's working against you until you find yourself locked up behind bars. You have black women that are police officers. Now is the chance for black men to become a part of the solution of your problem. Become a police officer, a law enforcement. Positions are open. Why aren't you applying for that? But black women are applying for those positions. Black women are applying for prison jobs, political positions. Look at the number of black women that's in Congress that's writing the laws or helping to create laws. And many of these laws are geared towards them and others, not you. Why are you too busy hanging in the street, your pants hanging down your butt, in and out of prison, looting and stealing from someone else She's out there getting her lawyer's degree, her doctor's degree. She's in the hospitals. That's off my topic. So we're headed fastly towards a matriarchy society. But another thought occurred to me while speaking to someone a few minutes ago regarding the mark of the beast. And the image of the beast. The young man said to me that the Bible doesn't say anything about the mark of the beast being a computer chip. No, it doesn't. I don't think he even really realized that the Bible even spoke of the mark and where the mark will be positioned. When I read that scripture to him, he was kind of surprised and he wrote it down and he's going to go read it for himself. But there's something that came to mind when I was reading the 11th verse to the 18th verse of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it to you because we're living in interesting times. And there's a reason why I'm speaking on or I spoke on the matriarchy society that we're fastly approaching. I want to read something to you that many of you more than likely never thought about. Reading Revelation, the 13th chapter, reading from the 11th to the 18th verse reads as follows. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Now, you got to realize this is speaking on political or governments, political figures, people that's in position of power and authority. These are leaders of the people that's got a beast nature. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. 
and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceive. Now pay close attention to this word deceive, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. The 15th verse says, And he gave power to give life unto the image of the beast. So this thing is not human. This image of the beast is not human. What came to my mind was, this is referring to a possible robot. We've been seeing in the news media where they have these like, these lifelike robots. These women robots, and it's mainly women. If you notice, the robots that are usually made are in the form or the image of a woman. And these robots are able to have sexual intercourse with men. The texture of these robots are like real women. They're supposed to feel like a real woman. They will talk and they will do what their master or Lord commands them to do. They're programmed and created specifically for them, for the owners. So this image of the beast, could it be a lifelike robot? Because they're talking about merging humans and AI. They're talking about how powerful robots have become or artificial intelligence to the point where it could actually take over the world one day. And they fear that it might turn on man and destroy man. That's some of their fears. Because now robots or AI is starting to think for itself. And it's constantly being fed information through social media. That man had created. So now social media has recorded your emotions, your thoughts, ideas. You ever type something and before you get it out, it already typed it for you? You take Siri, for example. I was watching something on YouTube earlier today, and the guy in the video mentioned Siri, and then my HomePod kicked on. And Siri responded to the voice and the call of her name. So that's how advanced technology has become. The iPhone 13 just came out, and now they're talking about an iPhone 14. They already have it in production, from what I hear. So technology is fastly growing, and while humans are occupied with racism, white supremacy, and Who's not being treated fair? The beast is creating an image to control and manipulate you. One day you will bow down and worship that beast. Think I'm lying? I'll read on. The 15th verse reads again, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak 
and cause the beast, or better yet, the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What does that remind you of? That reminds you of those vaccinated and unvaccinated people. If you're unvaccinated, you we're getting ready to have a concert, but the unvaccinated people aren't welcome. The unvaccinated people are the cause of other people dying, the vaccinated people dying. So now family members are being divided between vaccinated and unvaccinated. The unvaccinated people lose their jobs. Either get this thing or you now can't work. We get rid of you and you can't collect unemployment. You can't do this and you can't do this because you're unvaccinated. But it's going to get to the point where right now we have medical and religious exemption and people are quitting their jobs and leaving their jobs and they just refuse to take that jab. But a time is coming where it says that that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So now this is the inanimate object that they call cause to speak. And this inanimate object and I say it's inanimate, although robots are able to move. This thing is going to dictate whether or not you live or die. The 16th verse says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So just like now you have people that's not able to attend certain events or buy certain things because they have not received the jab. Likewise, it says, this is the final test right here. Right now you're being tested. And many have already failed the test. But when the real test comes, which is this mark. It says, And no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So you're either going to have that number or the name of the beast tatted in you. The 18th and final verse says, Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, which is interpreted six six six. Now, I want to deal with the image of the beast. What if that image of the beast is in the form of of a woman because I already told you that we're headed towards a matriarchal society and women in many cases are causing or calling the shots right and you have men uh, have been bullied into laying down their masculinity the LGBT community is 
a very powerful group that controls a lot, that can shut your business down. You have performers that are afraid to even speak because their business would be shut down. They would not be able to perform. See, so what if this inanimate object, this robot, that was given the power to speak and it was given the power to issue death or announce death upon people that refuse to worship that image. You refuse to bow down to this image. The image could have you put to death. These are the times that we're living in, and these are the times that we are fastly approaching. My question is, will you be able to stand? So I just want to put that thought in your mind and beware of what time you're in. It's like when I lived in Brooklyn, and you had dudes that come from upstate to visit and they come there with some nonsense. And, you know, I would say to them or maybe some of my friends was like, yo, man, you know where you are? Do you know where you are? In other words, you can't be doing that here. Do you know what time you're in? And be very careful. If you go to those polls. Be very careful who you vote for. Because right now, both sides have some demons. There's very few that's fighting for righteousness sake. Everybody else is, and I'm going to use Kwame Brown saying, go along to get along. See, those are the times that we're living in. And this matriarchy society is fastly approaching. And these women that's in position of authority is operating in emotions. These are the results of their emotions, their anger that man allowed them to have. Man gave them that power to destroy this nation. So, what do you think about that? See, and be careful, man. Do not vote Michelle Obama nor Kamala Harris. Black people get away from blackness. And I'm speaking politically. Get away from political blackness. Everything is not about black and white. Every white person is not your enemy. And every black person is not your friend. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe, click on the Cash App or the Chimes or Venmo and support this channel. Until next time, I'm fearless.